if we could go to the first slide of what we're going to cover today. Um, the original, just a refresher on what the original scope was and all the things, just as a background, all of the things in the original scope that we determined before this project even began are included in the final project. There's some additional scope, some of which was driven by us and some of which was driven by the city of Bloomfield Hills. Um, we're going to look at interior, some interior finishes which we have samples of over here and not very good representations of on the overhead. Uh, we're not quite final final on the finishes. Uh, there's some, um, the uh, design review team has uh, uh, some questions about some of the colors and we'll resolve those over the next couple of weeks. We'll touch base on some green features of the project, the costs and the financials. Uh, Jim Shettle is going to talk about the um, schedule and uh, then we'll do a Q&A. But we are, we're done planning and we're going to start building. So. Uh, the original scope included the main entrance, the roof skylight foyer, the common uh, corridor or connector, classroom interiors, red, blue, green, uh, the restroom renovations, refurbishing the social hall, and the next slide is redoing the parking lot and sidewalks, uh, parking lot lighting improvements, site drainage, air conditioning in, in uh, the red and green door rooms so that we're air conditioned throughout the campus, and remote temperature and security control. All of those things are in the project. And in addition to that, the city uh, wanted us to take a look, wanted us to more significantly revamp our parking lot lighting, which it really needed, and also uh, uh, bring all of our outside building lighting up to current codes. Uh, the uh, <laughs> The dumpster, I, we, I wish we didn't have to do this, but we, we, uh, I'll, I'll be conducting tours um, <laughs> at some point when it's finished of our $18,000 dumpster enclosure. So that's the city, that's not the CDPC. Uh, we are, the city has also driven cleaning out our pond, which is a good thing, enlarging it a little bit, and installing a rain garden so that all the flow off the roof, instead of going directly in the pond, will be filtered through a rain garden so the water quality is improved before it goes into the storm system, uh, the storm sewers. Um, we have some additional scope in terms of furnishing, uh, particularly in the uh, lobby area, and the lobby restroom is going to be upgraded and enlarged so that it's another fully accessible uh, restroom for the campus. The big minus, get it out of the way. Um, the city of Bloomfield Hills um, drove our property a couple of times, and, and including on Sundays, and said there's no way an ambulance or a fire engine could get through here. And so they're going to require us to not have parallel parking in any of the drive areas. So there's no, going to be no parallel parking along the brick wall that separates us from the residential property, and no parallel parking along the drive going down to Woodward or along the, um, the area, the drive area between uh, our campus and uh, Edward Rose. Um, we have to bring it up to current safety standards and so we will lose 13 real parking spaces um, in total and a number of not real parking spaces as well. And it's going to, it's going to, it's going to require us to change our behavior a little bit. I know that uh, the choir is already committed to uh, any other uh, more able-bodied folks parking uh, uh, far, either further away or uh, uh, in the lot next door on Sundays. Uh, the the, the uh, city did allow us, we're really not compliant for the cross aisle widths in the parking lot and the big thing is we're not compliant with our setback from Lone Pine Road and in the discussions they let us let us go on those or we'd have lost another 10 parking spaces along uh, Lone Pine Road. So it is going to require some, um, some habit changes. 
Okay. Um, Yamasaki tied inside and outside. It was a, an important feature of his uh, design vision to tie inside and outside spaces. And uh, as Keith Brown told me, his, one of his uh, Yamasaki, Keith worked with Yamasaki, if, if there are any of them don't know that. One of his objectives was that you would come through the entry spaces into a courtyard and be delighted and surprised. And um, he accomplished that, and then David Osler, uh, in designing the sanctuary, honored that and kept, obviously, the connection with the Chapek Woods and connected the outside. One, one of my favorite things about the sanctuary is this curved wall and watching the sun change on it and the connection from the inside to the outside with that. Not that I don't listen to the sermons, too. But. Um, Inform made a deliberate attempt to continue and build on that inside-outside connection. And I'm going to step down and use the pointer. If, if you would go back to, the, back to the slide that was there. The, in this area, we've got scored concrete. And that scored concrete continues in a little bit different fashion in beyond the bollards. There are lighted bollards that separate the uh, drive area from the walk area. Uh, new landscaping. This wall right here is white glass. And you can see from a connection standpoint, it, it, you, don't see, you don't see through it and it doesn't really light the interior spaces, but like some of the facades on office buildings and you know, skyscrapers, it's a, it's a glass facade. And we've gone from a pair of doors to two pair of doors plus side lights that cross the whole width of the opening. And then in addition, these uh, uh, top lights or uh, uh, overhead uh, um, windows. And as you get to the interior, the um, um, brick wall, the two brick walls that are in the lobby are eliminated. So either from the courtyard or from the outside entry area, you see all the way through the lobby into the landscaping that's in the courtyard, for example, as you enter the building. It's, it's a pretty big change. Okay, next slide. Interior finishes, this is just meant to be an overall, um, it's, it's difficult to see, but here's our entryway, you're coming in here. Um, why don't we just go to the next slide, I think I can explain it better. We go, to the go through the entryway, and to the left is a coat room, and along this is a coat corridor. Uh, this level right here is all the same level as the entry. You come in off a, uh, onto a walk-off mat. And this level, it remains here to the office, which is right here. And there's some steps down from the office. This area is uh, a gently sloping floor that comes down to a landing here and continues on gently sloping to just outside the social hall and the pavilion. Um, I had hoped that this would be a little bit easier to see with the screen than the wall, but the carpet is, uh, and you'll see samples of it here, the carpeting is directional. So when you come in, the carpeting is in a direction that leads you this way, or leads you down this way, or leads you over this way. Um, same thing, there are carpet tiles uh, in the uh, pavilion area, and let's, uh, the, the finishes are just too difficult to see. You'll see the individual samples over here. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, this gives you a sense of the carpeting, and again, what Inform has tried to do is, is keep a very organic sort of in, outside feel to the carpeting materials as you, as you come in. Uh, and also, they're, they're separating them in ways that um, um, get a little darker toward the edges, lighter in the middle. Again, that gives you a sense of direction. And uh, we'll post this so that on your, <laughs> your computers at home, you can really see the pictures uh, of the, you know, these organic shapes as you walk, walk through it. So again, it's connecting the inside with the outside. The ceiling's not very exciting. It's a really nice ceiling, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> go to the next. This gives you some sense. The lobby is going to be a lot bigger area than it is now. We're moving it out 25 feet to the south toward the parking lot or put toward the driveway. And this area here, you're looking at um, the gently sloping floor. This is, you're looking at it from a perspective that's sort of by the outside the large conference room. And there are butcher block uh, designed wooden millwork and benches all along both the inside and the outside of that. So there's a pretty large gathering area here with benches here and here. And then here we are at the office going down the steps and benches here, benches here, a lot of gathering spaces and we'll probably end up furnish, using some, putting some furniture into the, this area so that people can gather. There are plugs there so you can sit with a computer and be online and chat and so on and so forth. Um, okay, next slide. Here's the social hall, and again, this is vinyl tile, or resilient flooring, and that's the pattern of it, and you can see uh, the, uh, uh, the actual samples that we're gonna use there. That one is decided, and, uh, and the paint color choices, and so on. And this is just showing the remodeled bathrooms, and we have samples of the, uh, not ceramic, porcelain tile, uh, and accents, and so to give you some sense of of, of uh, what the coloring is and so on and so forth. So next. Uh, here are the classrooms. Um, this is going to be, the blue room is going to basically, we're not going to, RE decided against, this is uh, resilient flooring, it's tile not carpet tiles. And they decided against mixing any colors, so this will be gray uh, with blue accent walls at each end. Uh, this, uh, the green door, or the red door rather, will be orange rather than red uh, for some psychological reasons. I don't get it, but they, they say, the architect says it's a bad idea to have red inside a room, so. <laughs> So we're going to relax them with sort of red. Um, and the green door room does have some green accent walls and uh, the carpeting for the red door and green door room does contain some color accent. So, so they can be messy. Uh, Ari has uh, uh, vinyl tile in here and the carpet tiles in here. And we're going to, there's some other things that are going on uh, in that room too. We're gonna replace the, uh, the ceilings, we got that in the scope, and get new lighting in those rooms so that you can see what you're doing. Next. Some green features, updates. Uh, the, uh, as we said, the pond uh, has to have a rain garden. We're gonna improve the water quality, at least in that area coming off the site. Um, more than 90% of the demolition materials by weight and volume will be recycled. All the concrete, all the asphalt, all the carpeting. Uh, they're going to have some dumpsters out to separate drywall and that sort of thing. So, oh, well, I mean, we take it by weight and volume and start throwing concrete and asphalt in it. We're going to be way, way over 90% of, uh, of the material by weight and volume. Uh, we're going to do asbestos remediation in the classrooms. It's nothing unusual. It's just the asbestos tile that everybody used, vinyl asbestos tile that everybody used in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And they're going to come in, tent, remove the, uh, the asbestos material, and take it to uh, a landfill that's dedicated specific, specifically to that. And one of the good things is we tested for asbestos throughout the campus, and that was the only place they found any. So. And for a building this old, that's pretty good. We're getting environmental product declarations on every one of our, uh, every one of the materials going into uh, the project. Uh, and um, I should back up because, uh, as Karen Stanky pointed out, the although although the carpet tiles are over 50% recycled, the vinyl is not. And I, I responded that the vinyl lasts longer. But anyway, we are gonna, we are going to know every material uh, uh, product declaration of it, where it was sourced, how much recycled is in, so on and so forth, and perhaps have a, a, a summary report at the end. A kind of a neat story is the carpet tile. Uh, is nylon, 
over half recycled, and one of their streams, and it, it is for this particular line, one of their streams, they've uh, 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 contracted with, uh, the carpet tile manufacturer contacted, contracted with a small firm in the Philippines, and I guess nylon um, nets are so cheap that if they get snagged, they just cut them loose, and they're part of that swirling vortex of plastic that's in the Pacific. These guys are going out and harvesting it uh, because nylon is a separate distinct plastic and they're harvesting it and they're getting tons of it and it's going into the carpet tile and some of it will be in our lobby. So, kind of a neat story. <laughs> Next one. Uh, the costs, the final scope, and this, these are these are not estimates, although there are pieces of it that are uh, such as the uh, uh, furniture allowance and the, the uh, trying to think of the word, the contingency. $75,000 contingency and that sort of thing. There are pieces of it that are not, won't be final until the project is final, but the overwhelming majority of this, 1879000 are actual bids uh, and, and uh, we've completed our deal and that's where, the, that's where the number comes out. It'll be a little bit fluid up or down, uh, but not much different from that. In the capital campaign, we raised $1,459,000 uh, we've talked since the beginning about our objective is to any shortfall from people who are, you know, become unable to, to uh, uh, honor the commitment, you know, with, uh, hold up the commitment that they made in dollars and that sort of thing. We are hoping to offset with, uh, uh, and it's our intent and plan to offset with contributions from new members or those that gave a one-time gift and wanted to see how things were going and that sort of thing. So we'll end up with a short fall reserve of somewhere between zero and fifty thousand dollars. The Hodes family, there were two pieces to this. Uh, they contributed, uh, they gave a bequest of forty thousand dollars to the church for some landscaping and 50000 for for um, um, a geothermal or ground source heating pump and dump system. That system is no longer legal, it, it no longer meets code to do it and the system that a, a true closed loop uh, ground source heating system would be about $125,000 so we really don't have the funds. Uh, Ed Sharples and Kathy talked with Bunny Hodes about it and the family has a particular interest in accessibility and was happy to see those funds go to um, uh, the project in general for accessibility. So the minimum net projected funds available will be a million four ninety nine. If you add, if, if, if we're successful in our plan to, to raise the other, perhaps 50,000 or raise whatever the shortfall uh, is from the initial uh, contributors, then we'll have a million five forty nine, which leaves, leaves us with long-term funding needed of somewhere in the three hundred and thirty to three hundred and eighty thousand dollar range. So we're well within the maximum, and uh, and uh, that's that story. Okay. Uh, just to remind folks. Um, Just to remind folks, the uh, top number there, which is a firm number exclusive of a few contingency items, small small numbers, uh, is just below our one million nine budget. Uh, just to mention that, that's all. <laughs> Um, and we, there are a couple of items too that the that McCarthy and Smith is still Smith are who are our construction managers are still beating some contractors over the head. So we hope we can <laughs> take that down a little bit. So the capital campaign status we have a million four fifty nine in committed funds minus whatever shortfall we might have from folks whose circumstances have changed or whatever. In the first six months, we have received, ah, goof, it's typo my fault. It should say the first 16 months, and I'll, I'll uh, correct that in the, in the uh, uh, copy that goes on the website. So the first 16 months, we have received $696,000 in contributions to the project, or 48% or of the total. When you add the 90,000 in HODIS funds, to that. Uh, to date, we have 786000 minus what we've spent on the project at this point, which is uh, less than a third of that. 
and over the next 44 months uh, we uh, will be uh, needing to collect the, the remainder of the commitments of 763,000. There obviously there's some front loading with some one-time givers and that sort of thing but um, um, the, the folks seem to be for the most part uh, really keeping up with their commitments. And our status, the bids are complete and for the most part have been awarded. Uh, the Planning Commission has approved the project. That was a journey in itself. Um, the building permits are applied for and we're uh, both McCarthy and Inform Studio are bird dogging, are, are shepherding that and have a good relationship with the building department so we hope to have those within the next couple of weeks. And our financing is in process. We've, we've been dealing with two banks and a couple of approaches. Uh, one approach is the bridge financing plus an end mortgage and another approach is um, to just simply have a large line of credit for the total amount of the project and pay it off uh, as if it were a mortgage and that, uh, there's some flexibility that, uh, that allows uh, you but we're not, uh, we, we're not at the point where the board is a, has approved exactly how we're going to do that but the, uh, we expect in the next, at the next board meeting to, uh, uh, to have them make the decision and Jim and I have spent, uh, Jim Shettle and I have spent quite a bit of time with the banks and think we have uh, a couple good options. So. Um, Next, uh, whoops, I need to get out of the way. <laughs> I'll echo what uh, Dick said, and we're, uh, <clears throat> we're done planning and ready to go here with construction. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Kimberly for finding this in rummage, so I'm all ready to... <laughs> I'm ready to work with the McCarthy and Smith uh, site project manager. And um, what I want to go through today, um, kind of some scheduling things, what's going to happen to the building, how it's going to affect how we get in and out of the building, and then also um, we we'll actually show you uh, the, the what's going to, how the construction is going to be affect, affecting that. So um, the first thing is um, us kind of clearing out of uh, some of the buildings. So uh, this m mostly means the, the foyer gallery, the classrooms, and um, uh, that, that's that's mostly furniture. Most of the furniture is going to go into the commons, uh, and uh, some odds odds and ends. I think we can fit into the music room. Um, the the commons will be that general storage. It's going to be uh, pretty much shut off for a lot of the construction because of the work on the the connector hall. Okay. Um, the, uh, the the sanctuary and the lower level are, are not going to be affected. Okay, so uh, the the large lower level room will be kind of a main room that we can use for uh, meetings, um, uh, classroom, and what have you. Um, Evenings, uh, Monday, Monday and Friday nights are going to be kind of clear for our own meetings and use. Uh, I've already rented it out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, so <laughs> got to keep some cash flow moving. Um, um, so May 23rd, uh, you know, the th place is going to start to get. Uh, Em empty out out there. So when you come in Memorial Day weekend, you know you'll you won't see a lot of furniture. Uh, the sanctuary won't won't change, uh, and then uh, uh, the p pavilion really won't change much. And I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, the McCarthy and Smith, uh, and I want to emphasize I have question marks on dates here because um, you can't hold me to these dates. Uh, the building, the, the permitting process, as Dick mentioned, is still not final. So not much um, is going to happen, and, and particularly the, the wrecking ball is not going to happen until the permits are, are finalized. Um, so basically, um, after Memorial Day, they're going to start to, you know, dumpsters, uh, uh, kind of start to you know, survey the, the site and so forth and so on. So maybe they might even be staging some materials and so forth. Uh, the, uh, as of now, again, don't hold me to the date here, but um, 
that first week of June, again, site prep, uh, dumpsters, material, workmen stuff will be coming in, and June 6th is right now the demolition start. And um, uh, I know Kathy's got, uh, we have a, a ceremonial sledgehammer going to be scheduled that was part of the service auction. Uh, so that'll be some point, we, we haven't picked the wall yet, but uh, uh, stay tuned, okay? Um, and so this, this really is, so the foyer gallery and the con connector is, is where that's going to start. Um, Thanks. Um, what what happens pretty much the same time, and again it's a little bit uh, a little bit tentative as far as timing, but pretty much the same time that first first part of June, they're going to start to um, work on flooring. So it means social hall floor gets torn up, the uh, the colored door rooms get torn up. Uh, asbestos abatement is the first step there, as Dick mentioned. Um, so, so pretty much, you know, the, de the demo crew is coming in right away, okay? So it's going to be a, a, a real mess from the very get-go. Um, the, the, the refresh areas, again, social hall flooring and paint, the colored door rooms, flooring and paint, uh, restrooms, uh, flooring walls and fixtures, and then carpeting in the pavilion. Um, the uh, the uh, so these these areas I'm calling refresh because they're they're, they're going to be done uh, before the foyer. Okay, so I'm hoping, and this is pretty much what they've scheduled, but all those finishes by the end of August. Okay, so we'll have we'll have the social hall back, the color door rooms, the p pavilion back by uh, Labor Day. Uh, cross our fingers. Okay. Um, let's see what else. The pavilion carpeting will. I'm hoping a week or so that might tie up the pavilion. That's going to restrict, obviously, one way of access in, into the sanctuary. So, when that happens, we'll have our, our side door access to the sanctuary. Right? Okay. Um, the offices. Uh, if you remember, the, the foyer and the commons connector are being worked on, dug up, concrete's getting sawed up and everything. So that, that translates to both doors to the office are, are pretty much a construction zone. Um, we're going to work closely with the, uh, the site project manager. They'll be allowing us in and out of there uh, uh, certain times. Uh, so some days we won't be able to, to get in. Some days they'll have to escort us in with our, our hats certain hours of the day and so forth. Pardon? And, and the climate, yeah, we, that's our backup plan. We can climb in the windows. We, we, we already salvaged a little climbing still for that as well. Um, so, um, you know, some of our procedures are going to get, our processes may get slowed down a little bit, so if you'd be patient with us, we will, we will be in and out, but, you know, things may not happen quite as fast. Um, uh, we'll, uh, I'll, my, my cell phone's out there if you, you know, g g Google me. Unfortunately, you can always find my cell phone number. Um, but but we'll we'll keep you, we'll keep you informed. And uh, along that line, um, we're going to have a uh, construction update on the website, and we'll we'll update it frequently as possible. It, 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 I mean, every day if if needs to be. To in terms of letting you know you know what's going on, where you can't be or can be, and the timing of things happening, and so forth and so on. Uh, so just so just keep keep that in mind to watch the website. Um, um, the, the other a couple of things, and don't switch the slide yet. Um, but the um, the pond, it, it, uh, Dick mentioned, I think the pond, that's going to affect um, access via the lower level sidewalk. So the timing of that we don't know yet. We'll keep you posted about that. But um, Bob, if you can, if you can move there. Okay. So this is a little bit busy, but um, what, what I wanted to show you is. Uh, Let's see. Where are we? Here's here, here sorry. Here, here's the front door, okay? Here's the front door. 
So uh, what the construction folks are going to start to do is, is stage their, their equipment, materials, the dumpsters. Dick mentioned we'll probably have a whole army of dumpsters out here to sort the material. So this is the first two rows of parking next to the building, right? Um, the, our new beautiful dumpster enclosure is going to be there. <laughs> So, so one of the main accesses of the building during construction is going to be um, along this path here. So this is the west side of the commons, through the playground, <coughs> courtyard, and into the pavilion, okay? During, during, during construction, that will be available Sundays, e evenings, and so forth. Um, the other thing, during construction weekdays, this is the, the Woodward Drive. Th there'll be a signs up here, uh, construction entrance only. This is gonna be construction workers, maybe some odds and ends, no, no heavy equipment or anything, but this is gonna be uh, construction workers only during the work week time, work week days, right? Um, at some point, fairly early, Dick showed you that uh, scored concrete. They're gonna be tearing up the drive here, okay? along the front, right by the front door, and redoing sidewalk and so on and so forth. Therefore, um, during Sunday, Sunday, you can see Sunday access is, will also be available here, right? Into the bride's room door and out by the pond, except when the pond's getting worked on, okay? <laughs> um, but when this construction starts, you will not be able to get through here, okay? So you, you can park here, you can park down here to Lone Pine, and I would encourage you to use the Rose Lock, right? As best you can, you know, n n navigate the berm and so forth. Uh, on Sundays, Sundays, yes, Sundays, and I would say, and evenings. I mean, they're, they're, they should be finishing work, and again, there's no, there should be no dangerous stuff here. So, e evening meetings and so forth, you can still access the sanctuary and so forth through here and and, and the l lower level. Okay. Um, so the two main routes is along the long, the the scenic route is here. <laughs> And the uh, climb up the hill and, and get in this this way. Um, so I, I mentioned, uh, yeah, obviously Sundays in the Rose Lot. Um, uh, this this will be available Sundays as well. Um, the pond I mentioned, uh, BUC website. Keep keep that uh, in mind or watch. Um, the you know, I mentioned the refresh work. So the social hall, the classrooms, the p pavilion, we're hoping by September 1st, right? Uh, the rest of it, the major part, the foyer, gallery, um, and the commons connector is into the fall. So we're talking October-ish in terms of getting some of the finishes done. So that's kind of a, a loose target, but uh, there'll, there'll be some impact still uh, when we get back in September, okay? So just keep, we'll just keep you posted as, as often as, as we know something and uh, watch, watch the website. I guess it's time for questions, Nick. And there's one here, Stephanie. Yes, um, wait for the mic. Oh yeah, wait for, wait, wait for the mic, please. Jim, can we just put a fence in front of the entrance garden to the Chappaque Woods and in front of the butterfly garden just so that there's a boundary that they can see? Sure, yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the, once they start working on the pond, they're gonna, I'm sure they're gonna do some of their own, of their own fencing, but... Before then. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm hoping that we'll all take this opportunity to do more carpooling. Great idea, thank you, here. Yes. great idea. Um, to save on um, parking spaces and uh, using less fossil fuel, and I hope that can be on some of the updates on the website and such. Remember, carpooling equals community building. <laughs> Lisa? Hi, I'm, I'm a little puzzled about the rain garden. You make it sound like we're cleaning up the water for the city. Is that really true? 
Um, for the world. For the I mean, world. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't mind doing it for the world. <laughs> since, since we're all connected. <laughs> Does it also clean the water in, our, in the pond? Yeah. It improves the quality of the water going into the pond. It depends on where it comes from. But it will, correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, but all of the, all of the water that comes off the sanctuary roof would go mm -hmm. into the rain garden. In, in the social hall roof, yeah. In the social hall roof. So um, I always thought the water that came off your roof was fairly clean. I mean, usable for garden and planting and so on. So why is the city upset about the water that comes off our Probably because it's a tar flat roof. I see. Oh, Dick? Oh, I know. He's not. Uh, did I understand all the bids are complete? Yes. Okay. Uh, with the exception of a couple of contractors that are they're trying to squeeze another little bit out. And, and no, su no surprises, huh? Those what? No surprises? Uh, well... I would say I would say no. In aggregate, no. There were, you know, you can argue about why is the mechanical as high as it is. But then again, the landscaper came in way low. And you know, there are puts and takes. Okay. But uh, in aggregate, we're not going to go over that number unless we decide to go over that number. The one I'm mostly concerned about is the uh, asbestos abatement. Uh, you have a uh, further bid on that? Yep. And and if you apply to the state for their approval. Uh, I don't, that, that'll be handled by the company that's doing the abatement. Okay. We, don't, we, don't, we don't apply for the permit, but. That can be quite lengthy, that, that application. Yeah, I'm not, the company that's doing the abatement is gonna handle the paperwork with the state, okay. and has okay. to take it to a state approved landfill and process and so on and so forth. Okay, but, just be prepared, that could cause a delay, yeah. Okay. I just had a quick question. It sound, sounds like the colored door rooms, if everything goes well, should be available again for when the new school year starts in the fall. But the area that it sounds like won't be ready yet because of the commons connector is the commons. And normally the commons is where we have the eighth grade owl class. And it's a good location for that because it's off to the side and it's not interrupted. And so what is the location, maybe for Dave, what's the location that's like up for owl for the fall. Well, well, Max, I think that the commons we're ho I think we're hoping the commons can be done earlier too. I guess that that's not quite spelled out yet, but that that that's a uh, minor part of the project as far as complexity, and that could well be done by, by September too. We're just not sure yet. Yeah. So if it is, that's good, and if not, that'd be something to get lined up so there's an alternative. Appropriate. We'll know that by you know August one or something. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have one concern about our Alliance annual meeting in the social hall on June 1st. It sounds like we'll just barely get in there and be part before everything else changes. Barb, if you can back up a slide. Is Barb there? Yeah. yeah. Um, see, Anne, this is your, your date right here, see? <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, Anne. <laughs> yes, just barely. <laughs> Two questions. First, what is the minimum number of handicapped parking slots that will be available during construction? And secondly, what is the minimum number of restrooms that will be available at any point in time during construction? Thank you. Depends on depends on what what day and and uh, minimum. So that we don't give a wrong answer, can we get into it with McCarthy and Smith? Minimum number of handicapped parking spaces. Minimum number of restrooms. Um, I just don't want to do something off the top of our head, but we'll get. Donna, we'll get those answers. Just a quick question about the paint that's going to be used. Are they low BOC? Yes. yes. Are you using low BOC? Yes. Zero BOC. Yeah. Zero. 
Just a small one. I understand we're doing the parking lot. When does that fall schedule-wise? The park on the parking lot. Parking lot would be, would be after. We're probably in the spring, right? Yeah. Uh, our, our hope is that if the weather's good enough, they don't want to do it when it gets too cold. It'll be the last thing to be done. That and the lighting for the parking lot. So their their intention is to get that done by November or in November. Um, it's possible it could go over to the until we get good weather in the spring. I don't think so though. McCarthy and Smith is highly motivated to get this project. <laughs> I have a question of clarification. <clears throat> is there going to be carpeting in the green and orange dorms? Is that right? Correct. Yes. I really question the, the um, good judgment about that, but I just work here. <laughs> I used to work here. <laughs> it is carpet tile. Yeah. It's carpet tile, which, which you know, if you get a stain or maybe you know one gets ripped up or something like that, we can easily replace them. And the decisions about where to do uh, resilient flooring and where to do carpet tile were done with Ari's input. So. Um, And the kind of carpet tile, it cleans really easily. All we have to do is clean it. <laughs> um, this is not part of the list of um, things, but the courtyard landscaping, what's the status of that? Is that going to be redone at any point in the budget? You're talking about the courtyard in front or the courtyard in the... Main courtyard. Yep. Uh, sure. We don't have a plan or a budget. It won't be, dis it won't be disturbed by the construction activity uh, to any extent. Um, but we don't have a budget or a plan for it. That's, we have a plan. We have a plan. It's... And one, one last thing, since there might be more of us than can see these samples in a crowd, could you maybe walk them up and down the aisle and show them and point out what goes where, or just rather than have a crowd go over there and try and see those? I don't know. Just yeah, I think, I think we probably ought to try to do this in a formal way once all the decisions are made, which will be pretty soon. And rather than try to do that today and say, okay, this one, it might not be quite as blue gray as this one when we get to, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I, I, we, we need to, and Barb will bug me, I'm sure, to, to do a final board that really displays it in final form and in a good way. But, yeah. I know at one point there was some thought about possibly putting a labyrinth in the tile in the social hall. Where does that stand? We can, if we, if we have, an, if there's a plan that we want to do, and you know, Reverend Hurt and Jim Shell will say we got to go get a bid for this. We, we can go get a quote. The initial, we did talk to McCarthy initially about it, and it's not a simple thing in the sense that every piece of vinyl has to be cut perfectly, and it would probably, for the whatever area it is, would probably double the price so of, of the flooring installation. So um, I, don't, I, I, I know there's been suggestions of doing it. Um, I don't have a directive to do it, let's put it that way. And how might that come about? Uh, Mr. Shettle and Reverend Hertz say, Dick, as part of this project, we need to get a we need to get a quote on this plan for a labyrinth. I was just saying a labyrinth doesn't have to have curved sides. It can be square and wouldn't require quite as much cutting or planning. If it's a little, little square. Yeah. Um, 
Um, it, it, just to respond or expand on the response to the question about uh, are we going to do anything with the, with the courtyard and plantings and that sort of thing to upgrade, I think when we get done with this, we're going to see, wow, you know those doors don't look so good, they should be refinished, or you know those posts are, the white paint is built up for quite a while, we ought, to, we ought to have somebody come in and wire brush them and on and on and on, or the molding's a little dirty and so on and so forth. So I think we're going to, I think this will, <laughs> will beget some more small projects, uh, a number of them as time goes on, as we try to get the rest of the campus to uh, up to the standards that this new area will be. And, and we, we do have a budget for some landscaping, right? But mostly around the front. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. 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 I'm, just in closing, I am really excited about, I, I think, the, the transformation that we're going to see in, in, uh, in support of RE, in support of music, in support of uh, worship, and in support of gathering in the, in the, the much expanded space in the lobby and, and the issue of accessibility for everybody, I think is... I think the project, once there, it's hard to convey with, with samples and that sort of thing exactly what you're doing, but I think the architect has a terrific vision and uh, it'll be a, a transformative thing. So in conclusion, I just would like to express our appreciation not only for Dick, but for all of the members of the committee who have worked on this for so long and have done it for such a long time and have worked so hard. So if you're here, could you please stand up so that we can appreciate you? <laughs>